in this example we've got a perspex pipe that's 25 meters long and 12 millimeters in diameter and we're trying to find the loss of head due to friction when the mean velocity is 0.164 meters per second and then again when the mean velocity increases to 1.64 meters per second so the second time we did this calculation the mean velocity is going to be 10 times larger than the first so the way we're going to do that is with something called the darcy weisbach equation which tells us that the total loss of energy due to friction or the total loss of head due to friction is something called the friction factor times the length of the pipe over the diameter of the pipe times by the velocity squared over 2g so this is the main equation that we're going to use to find the loss of head due to friction we're also going to need the Reynolds number for this calculation so from the last video hopefully you can remember that the Reynolds number is the velocity times the pipe diameter over the viscosity of water so if we think about what we need to calculate here we can calculate Reynolds number because we know the velocity, we know the diameter, we know the viscosity of water. For our total head loss, we know the velocity, we know gravity, we know the length of the pipe, we know the diameter of the pipe. We're trying to find HF, but the thing we don't know is the friction factor F. So the friction factor F is going to tell us what the head loss is dependent upon the characteristics of the pipe. So what this equation is telling us is that the total loss of, of head is going to go up as velocity goes up because as velocity increases we're going to get more friction so more head loss. It's going to go up as the length of the pipe goes up because the longer the pipe the more friction, the more resistance we have due to friction. It's also going to go up as this friction factor goes up. So this friction factor is telling us what the resistance due to friction is uh, based on the characteristics of the pipe that we've got in question. So the way we're going to find F to solve this equation is using something called the Moody diagram. So the Moody diagram will tell us what F is for a given Reynolds number and pipe characteristics. So the Reynolds number is going to go on our x-axis and we can then read the friction factor off the y-axis. So what we're going to do is draw a line straight up from Reynolds number and one of these black lines will correspond to our pipe and where that line going straight up from Reynolds number intersects the black line that corresponds to our pipe we're going to draw, draw a line horizo horizontally across until it crosses the y-axis and where it crosses the y-axis will give us our value of friction factor so let's have a go at doing that so just the first thing we're going to need to do is calculate Reynolds number so Reynolds number is u d over v so u for the first part of the example is going to be 0 0.164 d is given as 12 millimeters which is 0 0.012 meters divided by our kinematic viscosity of 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second for water which gives us a Reynolds number of 1968 so the first thing that we should be able to realize if you think back to the last video is that Reynolds number is below 2000 so we expect this flow to be laminar and now we've got that Reynolds number we can plot that onto the Moody diagram and see what our friction factor F is for this example and then work out HF so the first thing we're going to do is find Reynolds number on the x-axis of this chart so You'll notice that the axes of, these, of this chart are logarithmic, so for every major step we go up, we're jumping up our order of magnitude, so we've got 1,000 here, and 10,000 here, 100,000 here, a million here, and so on and so forth. So in between the major steps, uh, we can go up from 1,000 to 2,000 to 3,000 to 4,000 to 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, once we reach the next major step, we're now jumping up by an order of magnitude. So we're now going 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 until we get to 100,000. And then we're going 
100,000, 200,000, 300,000 and so on and so forth. If you're unsure about how to use logarithmic graphs then I would recommend looking up uh, how to do it before you try this procedure. But our Reynolds number is 1968 so let's say that's 2000. So 1000 is here, 2000 is the next line long so we're going to draw a line straight up from 2000 on this chart. So I'm going to draw my line straight up from 2000 and we're looking for where that line crosses the black line for our pipe and what we can see here is that for laminar flow we only have one black line so there's only one line to cross and our red line that we've drew up from our Reynolds number so we found our Reynolds number of 2000 we drew our red line up and we can see that the red line crosses the black line for laminar flow at this point here so what we're going to do is draw a horizontal line across from that point and see where it intersects our y-axis. So a horizontal line from where our red line crosses the black line for laminar flow. Draw that line across and we can see that our friction factor here is going to be just above 0 0.03. So I'm going to call that 0 0.031. So from this example where we've drawn that horizontal line across our friction factor is going to be F equals 0 0.031. So now we have everything we need to solve this equation. So HF is going to be our friction factor 0 0.031 times by the length of our pipe 25 meters over the diameter of the pipe which is 0 0.012 meters times by the velocity which in the first part of the example is 0 0.164 squared over 2 times gravity, which gives us a loss of energy for the first part of the question of 0 0.089 meters. So as our water is traveling down this pipe, the friction that we've got in, along that 25 meter length of pipe is causing us a loss of head of 0 0.089 meters. So this is the energy that we're losing for first part of this question where our velocity is 0 0.164 meters per second. So we can do that calculation again for when the velocity is 10 times larger. So our Reynolds number now is going to be 1.64 times our diameter divided by kinematic viscosity which gives us a Reynolds number of 19 six eight zero so again we can think back to the video looking at laminar and turbulent pipe flow and what we can see is that our Reynolds number is above 4000 which tells us that this flow is going to be turbulent so our Reynolds number is 19680 that's going to be turbulent we can plot that on our Moody diagram and that will tell us what F is going to be for this second part of the example so our Reynolds number is 19680, we can round that up to 20,000 and what we've got to do is find 20,000 on the x-axis of our Moody diagram so 1,000 is here, 10,000 is here, 20,000 is going to be here so we draw a line straight up from 20,000 there we go, we can say that this point of the graph is Reynolds number of 20,000 the problem we've got now is that there's a whole range of possible lines that this red line is crossing and each one of these black lines corresponds to a different type of pipe and what we want to do is find our pipe. And The way that you choose what black line to use is based on something called the relative roughness. The relative roughness is the roughness of the pipe over the pipe diameter. So it's going to be the roughness of our pipe divided by the pipe diameter. So we can find the roughness of the pipe from this table here on the Moody diagram. So in the question we're told that the pipe is perspex. If we go to this table here we can see that a perspex pipe has a roughness of 0.0025 millimetres. So our roughness 
is 0.0025 millimeters and our pipe diameter is 12 millimeters. We want to keep these two units in millimeters and that gives us a relative roughness of 0.0002. So to work out which one of these black lines is our pipe, we're going to find the line that's got a relative roughness of 0.0002. And if we look down the lines, we can see that this line here has 2 times 10 to the minus 4, which is the same as 0.0002. So this black line here is the one that we want to use as our pipe. And we can see that our Reynolds number line coming up from the x-axis crosses that line at this point here. So just like the previous example, we're going to draw a horizontal line across from the point where our red line crosses our black line and see where that intercepts the y-axis. So we've drew our red line up from Reynolds number. We found which black line corresponds to our pipe based on the relative roughness. Where those two lines meet, we've drawn a horizontal line across and I'm going to say that that line is crossing the x-axis at about 0.0275. So for the second part of the example, I'm going to say that F is equal to 0.0275. So it's just a case of solving, of plugging the numbers into the HF equation. So F is going to be 0.0275. The pipe is still 25 meters long and the diameter is still 0.012 but now the velocity is 1.64 meters per second squared times 2 times 9.81 which gives us a total loss of head for this example of 7.85 meters. So this is quite an interesting result because we can start to see the effect of increasing the velocity and going from laminar to turbulent flow. For the first example, our total loss of energy was 0.089 meters, so a relatively insignificant loss in energy. For the second part of the example, we've doubled, we've, the velocity is 10 times larger, but the loss is now 7.85 meters, so very significant loss in total head. It's actually uh, an increase of a factor of about 80, 88. So velocity has gone up by a factor of 10, but the loss of head has gone up by a factor of 88. So the final thing that we can do, we've now looked at how to calculate a loss, and we've looked at that for two separate velocities, one 10 times larger than the other. What we can do is say, what happens to the total loss if we change the material of the pipe. So let's say that we go from a perspex pipe, which is very smooth, to a coarse concrete pipe, which is very rough. Well, for the first part of the example where Reynolds number was 2000, we've only got one line. So for laminar flow, the loss uh, due to friction is independent of the roughness of the pipe. So uh, because we've only got one trend within laminar flow, there's no extra losses when the pipe gets more rough. So our friction factor would stay at 0.031. So our answer would be exactly the same. It would be 0.089. For our turbulent flow where Reynolds number is 20,000, we're now gonna be having to find a different black line based on our relative roughness. So the roughness of the pipe when it's coarse concrete is now 0.25 millimeters. So our relative roughness is going to be 0.25 divided by our diameter in millimeters, which gives us a relative roughness of 0.02. So now instead of using the line where relative roughness is 0.0002, we're now going up until the relative roughness is 0.2. So we're now using this line. So the point at which our Reynolds number line intersects our pipeline, now the relative roughness is 0.02, is going to be much higher up the graph. So that's going to be this point here. So if we find that point where the Reynolds number line crosses 
the line with the pipe roughness of relative roughness of 0.02 and draw a horizontal line across from that point. We can see that the point at which we intercept the y-axis now is going to be higher and it's going to be just above 0.05. So I'm going to call that 0.051. So for our new rougher pipe that's coarse concrete, uh, F is going to be 0.051. So if we do the HF calculation, it's going to be 0.051 times by the length, which is 25, divided by the diameter, times by the velocity, which is 1.64 squared, over 2 times 9.81. And that gives us a loss due to friction of 14.6 meters. So for this final part of the example, all we've done is transition from a smooth perspex pipe to a more rough concrete pipe. And this has given us an effective doubling in the loss of energy. So going from a laminar flow to a highly turbulent flow, we've gone up by a factor of about 88. And we've gone up by a, another factor of two by going from a smooth pipe to a rough pipe. So in this example, what we've done is taken a perspex pipe that's 25 meters long and using the Moody diagram for two different velocities we've worked out uh, the loss of total head for a laminar flow in a smooth pipe, a turbulent flow in a smooth pipe and then a turbulent flow in a rough pipe and we've seen that that can have a really big effect on the total loss of head within the pipe.